guys? Crypto Muser here with a new video. Um, do you guys respect the SEC? Does the SEC deserve our respect? Do you think that the SEC is actually protecting investors? Do you guys feel protected? I sure in hell don't. I'm sure you guys don't. Um, I want in this video. I want to break down, you know, the the corruption of the SEC, you know, past and present. You know, just to show you how this agency has been working. Um, for years now, you know, under, you know, Democratic administrations and in Republican administrations, it's been the same old, same old with the SEC, where, you know, we've talked about this revolving door with the private sector and public sector where, you know, the bankers, you know, they work for the bankers, they work for the central banks, and then they work for the, the regulators and they go back and forth. So basically this, this agency and most other agencies are ran by the people that they're supposed to be regulating. So let's just get into it. So this first motion by Ripple, um, it's asking for uh, any SEC employees if they held any XRP or digital assets in the past years. So let's just look at the filing. Ripple has filed a motion seeking to compel the US Securities and Exchange Commission to reveal if its employees held any XRP or other digital currencies. The company is seeking uh, to lay its hands on regulators' internal trading policies as part of a lack of fair notice and regulatory clarity defense. Ripple has been fighting to access the SEC's internal trading policies for months now. In June, Judge Sarah Netburn ruled that the regulators should produce these policies to Ripple. And the SEC did produce some documents. Ripple uh, legal team did admit. However, this is not enough. The SEC produced the ethics guidance regarding digital assets, which showed that up until January 18th, uh, January 2018, it hadn't imposed any restrictions on holding digital assets for its employees. This, according to Ripple, is consistent with the SEC not having viewed digital assets as securities. At all times, from 2013 on until at least January 19th, 2018, SEC employees were free to buy, sell, and hold XRP without any restriction by the SEC, it stated. Likewise, it supports Ripple's fair notice defense that the SEC itself had not concluded that the sales of XRP, sales and offers of XRP were transactions in securities is evidence that the market participants lacked the requisite fair notice that XRP later would be deemed a security. So guys, if you're, you're telling me that, um, you know, the SEC is, is claiming that Ripple was selling XRP as a security from 2013 to present day, okay? And, that, and they're also arguing that they knew they were doing something illegal. So if they knew they were doing something illegal, then how are the SEC employees um, allowed to buy and sell XRP during this time? You know, if, if the employees of the SEC don't know if they're doing something illegal, how would Ripple know? How would, you know, market, uh, you know, everyday people like us, market participants, know they're doing something illegal? Obviously, they don't. Obviously, obviously, there's not enough clarity. You know, so and, and it goes to even show, you know, why are SEC, if they do find out that these SEC employees were holding XRP and holding other digital assets during this time, how is that legal? You know, that is just like prime insider trading. If you, you know, if you're a regulator or a government agency that makes laws or uh, makes policy uh, revolved around these digital assets or stocks or whatever, how are you allowed to hold these these assets? That should be totally illegal. And even, you know, break it down. If some of these SEC official or SEC employees owned XRP, right? And then they knew that this, this lawsuit was coming against Ripple. So obviously that would affect the price of XRP. You don't think they knew to sell their XRP before this lawsuit came down? That is prime insider trading. And guys, this is exactly why, you know, we need to keep writing on Congress people to let them know this is, you know, we can't allow for these government agencies to, you know, make money illegally like this. And, and it's so just in, in our face, you know, it, it, the corruption is, you know, they used to try to hide it, but now it's just like, you know, we, we don't, they feel like they don't even need to hide it now because who's going to stop them? Really, who's, who's going to stop them? If the people that are supposed to stop them are just as corrupt as them, then who is going to stop them? It's, it lies, uh, up to, it's up to us to make our voice heard and write our Congress people you know, vote in the right people. You know, we have to, we can't just let this, you know, 
some people just give up. Like, you know, it, it's corrupt. You know, people I talk to, it's corrupt. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You have to do something because if we keep letting them do this, they're just going to take money out of our pockets. They're going to keep you know, hurting our investments and it it's going to get worse and worse. And it's already so bad. So just wanted to uh, run through that. That leads me to my next thing. So this is a video that I want to show you. This is a guy talking about, basically talking about what this video is about, is about how corrupt and how the revolving door in the SEC works. So let's just play this video. Promising investigation involving securities fraud with Deutsche Bank was suppressed by an enforcement director who a few days later took a job as the general counsel of Deutsche Bank. So we know that this is part of the culture at the SEC. They have most of the people who are running the agency are high-priced political appointees who work for the same banks, or sorry, who used to work for the same banks they're supposed to be regulating. Uh, and so many of these cases get rejected, and it's by these bureaucrats who are looking to go back to Wall Street and take these multi-million dollar jobs. All right, now we exactly, guys. See how this, you know. You have bankers or people that are working for Goldman Sachs or J.P. Morgan, right? And, you know, either they're attorneys or they're working for, you know, their employees. And then, you know, they're there for years. And then all of a sudden a job opening opens up in uh, the SEC. And they're like, oh, guess what? You know, I probably could do us really good if I, you know, had a job as a regulator. And then, you know, I could put the, the right policies in place for us to make more money. So it's like, like we talk about this revolving door where it's like, they're so corrupt where they're just in and out of the private sector and public sector, and they're just making money for each other. So the whole SEC is ran by the bankers, basically. You know, it, it's like, like I was saying, it's so in your face corruption where it's like, like, come on now. Like, how easy is it? This, you know, it's not like we're conspiracy theorists here. This is basic, you know, knowledge. So I just, oh, it's just so incredible. And this is, I want to, this is bringing me to this other so this is a uh, article from Rolling Stone magazine from 2011. So this just goes back to show, you know, how long the, the, S the SEC has been doing. Uh, I mean, this is even before digital assets were around. So this is about, more about the stock market and, um, you know, traditional markets. But, you know, do you think it changed when the, when crypto showed up? No, it got, probably got worse because, you know, it's, it's an unregulated market and there's some serious money coming in. So obviously, you know, these bankers are these, corrupt people and, and the regulators are, uh, regulators are going to do the same thing. So just want to, so this article is from 2011. Um, I don't know, it's hard to click on it because it keeps loading and it moves around. So I can't read everything in this article, but I just want to read one quick thing. It's saying that to freaking, okay. What's going on now? It's not going to let me read it. See what I'm saying? I hate this. So read. I don't want to log in. It would let me do it before. Anyway, this article, I wanted to read a couple of things from the article, but now it's not letting me, obviously. So what this article is saying is that from, two, from 1993 till 2011, uh, this whistleblower came out, came out from that past SEC, SEC employee, talked about how they used to, um, you know, they started investigation against, you know, in fraud case or insider trading case against Deutsche Bank or you know, Goldman Sachs or something. And then they were, um, after they realized that, you know, illegal, you know, there was something illegal going on with these, um, you know, these bankers or attorneys, they would, the top officials at the SEC would, would tell um, these people to destroy all the documents. You know, it's, it's pretty unbelievable actually, where they have like multiple, it was almost, I think the guy said 8,000 investigations were, um, the documents were destroyed. So it's like, obviously there were illegal things going on, but the SEC was covering them up. The SEC was literally covering up the crimes from all these Wall Street bankers. And it was, it was especially during um, coming up to the 2008 crisis where, you know, I don't know if you guys all ever seen Big Short, which is a great movie. Um, uh, Adam McKay uh, directed it. Great movie. Everybody, I, you know, I recommend anybody go see it. It's about two, the 2008 um, collapse, financial collapse. And it just, you know, sh it shows how corrupt these officials at the SEC were during this whole thing where, you know, this article showed, you know, they were basically destroying evidence, you know, that tied all these, you know, bank bankers and banks that they were doing, they were committing fraud openly. And, you know, we all know that no one went to jail after that huge collapse that, you know, 
you know, people lost their homes, their 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 savings, you know, the, the regular person, you know, lost so big and the bankers and the people that actually, you know, let it all happen, nothing. There wasn't, not one person went to jail and the SEC covered it all up. And it just goes to show that this has been going on, like in this article, it says from 1993 till now. And you think they've changed? No, obviously not. They're doing the same thing. They're, you know, they're protecting their, their banker cronies. You know, look at Gary Gensler. You know, he's worked for uh, Goldman Sachs his whole life, basically. He was one of the youngest per people on Goldman Sachs board when he was 19, I believe. So you're telling me that, you know, he's going to become a regulator and he's going to come after his, you know, his buddies at Goldman Sachs? No, obviously not. You know, he's going to try to protect them. And what's he doing? You know, obviously crypto is threatening Goldman Sachs and Deutsche Bank and all these bankers. So what's he going to do? He's going to try to slow down the market. And he's coming after him hard, guys. I'm telling you, he, he is such a power hungry man and he wants to take down crypto. And he knows, I mean, I don't even know. If, I really don't know if he knows that he can't, but we all know that he can't. We know this train has left the station and crypto is the future. But, you know, this guy thinks he can stop it. And it's very dangerous when you have a guy in a, a leading a, a government agency like this that can come after investors like this. And like I said, you know, many times in this video and past videos, we have to do something about it, guys. We have to write our Congress people. So I wish I could read some more, you know, stuff in this article, but, you know, it's not letting me do it all of a sudden. But I recommend you guys read this article. Unbelievable. I'll put a, a, uh, I'll try to put it in the... Um, the info down below so you guys can check it out but it just show, it just shows you like i said how long the excerpt uh i'm sorry how long the sec has been corrupt and you know it's really is mind-blowing guys so i'll leave you with this great video that i saw on twitter um sometimes you know to get to people you got to break it down in, in an easier way and you know these videos are always good explaining things you know when they when they do with the art here and I just thought this was a great way to, you know, let the ordinary person or show the ordinary person how investment advisors who help you save for Let the ordinary person and just like explain it in a way where everybody can get it. So I just want to play this video and then we'll end this video. Uh, here we go, guys. Investment advisors who help you save for retirement follow a rule book set by Congress and the Securities and Exchange Commission. The SEC is the referee, protecting investors by calling penalties when a firm or advisor breaks the long-standing rules. But now, the SEC recently moved the goalposts. They threw a flag on decisions advisors made years ago between 2014 and 2018. There was one problem. Often, the agency couldn't cite a rule or regulation that specifically dealt with the matter at issue. Instead, the SEC was judging last season's games based on a new framework. The SEC should call a timeout on regulating without rules. They already have a required rulemaking process that includes safeguards for everyone, like notifying the public of changes and seeking comment. Why does this matter? Think of your financial advisors as players on the field. They can't do their jobs if the rules are unclear. New rules should be created holistically and clearly, not through random enforcement cases. It's not just firms and advisors who are penalized. Hard-working Americans trying to save for retirement are hit the hardest when our costs increase. The clock has run out on this game. Tell Congress that it's time for the SEC to stop regulating without rules now. You know, I thought that was just a great way to, you know, show what how the SEC is, is, is you know, basically muddying the waters even more with this market. And, you know, I just want to say one last thing before I end the video. You know, it's like, the reason why this market hasn't really grown, I mean, it's grown a lot, obviously. It went from, you know, 200 billion market cap to almost 3 billion, I mean, 3 trillion uh, this past year. But for this market really to grow, you need real regulation, a real clarity in the market so that these big time institutions aren't afraid to put their money in the market. Right now, you know, if you have millions of dollars, you know, and you want to put it in the crypto market, you don't, you don't, you're not too safe. You know, where do I put it? Is, is, you know, do I know ETH is safe? You know, it was safe, you know, with the Hinman speech, but now they're saying that, you know, 
Ethereum could be a security. So it's like you don't know what's safe, where where it is safe to put your money. And especially being a, like a financial advisor, which I am not, by the way, uh, being a financial advisor, you're advising your clients to, you know, maybe put money in crypto. You don't you, you can't really, you know, solidly tell your clients that, you know, this is a safe bet. So until we have real regulation and real clarity in the market and with, you know, with Gary Gensler, you know, it's all by enforcement. They, they like I said, he he works for the bankers. So he wants to muddy the waters as best as he can to keep the big money out of the market, in my opinion. So as soon as we get the right people in the SEC or the right people or the right people in Congress to actually make rules and clear clear laws and clear rules in this market, you know, we're never we're never going to grow as as a real market class. So or asset class. So you know, like I said, guys, you know, we really need to contact our Congress people and let them know that we need to. You know, we need clear rules and regulations in this market to grow. So just want to end it there. I just want to say I am not a financial advisor. Um, Please do not take anything I write or say as financial advice. Uh, This is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Guys, please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. Um, It would really help me out growing this channel. I'm trying to get as much information to you guys as possible. Um, So please like and subscribe. But uh, that'll be it, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.